be there and uh, the technical difficulties. We're going to go ahead and get started on this and uh, hopefully everything comes through OK. So today we are at number two in our series of three. Uh, Wiki community editing is the focus today. Uh, our series of three webinars and uh, I again am Jen Johnson from the State Library of Ohio. Thank you very much for being here and uh, on the technical setup patience. Let's go ahead and get started. Uh, we've got some time to uh, catch up on and we've got to fly the plane a little faster. So with today's agenda, we're going to talk about libraries and Wikipedia and if they really are BFFs, we'll figure that out. Maybe we'll get an answer today, maybe not. Uh, today again, specifically, we're going to be focusing on Wikipedia and Wikidata, getting some kind of rules of engagement and a roadmap of um, how to get started editing and contributing and really figure out where to begin that work. Here on the left, you can see a mission statement, a pretty standard mission statement that we're used to seeing it says to empower and engage people around the world to collect and develop educational content under a free license or in the public domain uh, and to disseminate it effectively and globally. And so that uh, to me sounds a lot like a library mission statement, but it's Wikipedia's mission statement. And if we compare that to ALA's 12 core values, we can see there's a lot of overlap in access and diversity, in lifelong learning, education, intellectual freedom, and uh, service responsibility and sustainability. And that includes sustainability of access and digital formats as well, not just sustainability like uh, climate change. So we can see there's a lot in common and a lot of the work that libraries and wiki media uh, projects do really overlaps quite well, especially when it comes to outreach and uh, that's working with educators and working with GLAM institutions. That would be galleries, libraries, archives, and museums. Uh, with uh, programming with educators, uh, there's a lot of collaboration with educators for curriculum development, but also you know, ways to use uh, references in, in Wikipedia and other wiki sources, wiki tools, how to learn how to use those tools as, as far as technology and information literacy skill, skills go. Um, technological literacy when it comes to just, you know, using a computer, using a mouse, um, how to learn how to code uh, simple bots, things like that. And it, it can vary based on your educational level. Uh, there's a lot of great overlap also with the work that libraries, archives and museums are doing as far as making their, access, their collections accessible to the public. We'll get into that uh, next time too. And there's a quick URL here if you're interested in signing up in any of the many mailing lists uh, normally I don't throw URLs in, but this is a pretty easy one to remember. So today, Wikipedia and Wikidata. We're continuing on with our banana split summertime theme uh, and asking the question, how do you make a wiki? Well, you make it uh, one ingredient at a time, right? Same with a banana split. You can see there's uh, several ingredients there and there's a lot of things that we can do to con contribute to the uh, Wikipedia, Wikidata community and create content and share the information that we have with users of those sites. Uh, we can you know, review submissions and, and items that others have flagged, report problems. There's a lot of discussion going on, answering questions about something that you might be a subject matter expert on or uh, you know, the way that things work around Wikipedia. Um, adding citations and references, adding images, adding content and creating content and lots more that we're going to cover today and we're going to cover it one bite at a time. So uh, one of the things that can really, I think, hamper me when I'm thinking about working in community focused projects like this is that we as information professionals have, uh, you know, been trained literally professionally uh, to to make sure that all of the information that we're putting out that we're responsible for is at you know the best standard that it can possibly be and Wikipedia was not designed for that I don't know if you were able to attend our first webinar but we talked about a sister project that had much more stringent review uh, for publishing and they only were able to put out a minuscule amount of content in their first year and Wikipedia wanted to avoid that so they built it on the elasticity and the strength of the community and the policies that were shaped. So it can be very tempting for us to say, you know, I want to make this whole article myself. I don't need anybody else to do it. 
probably a lot of us are the people in the group project who said, fine, I'll just do it myself. Uh, that can definitely happen <laughs> um, at times. But the the point of Wikipedia is to do the group project together uh, at times or that if you want to do things on your own, you can, but you certainly don't have to. Uh, so there's a little bit of uh, relaxing, maybe letting go, unclenching of that kind of perfectionism. Um, if you remember maybe something else from uh, library school, uh, I, I was reminded of Ranganathan's five laws of library science. And the fifth law is that library is an organic thing. And Wikipedia is an organic thing as well. Uh, you know, anything, humans are imperfect. Anything that humans create is not going to be perfect, but we're all going to work together to move it forward and improve it as we can, as we go one step at a time. So one of the downsides though, sometimes of the community working together is that uh, on Wikipedia and Wikimedia sites, there can be instances of hacking and uh, what's known as vandalism. Uh, sometimes it can be malicious, sometimes it can be just nonsensical, people changing birthdays or uh, putting insulting things. Sometimes, as in this case, uh, it is clearly hilarious. Uh, this uh, On the left here, Lebronto was named the capital of Ontario after a particularly excellent showing that LeBron James had against the Toronto Raptors one night uh, at home, at, at home in Toronto, a home game for the Raptors. And then on the right here, uh, back in 2013, uh, LeBron also happened to pull off an exceptionally good dunk on Jason Terry, and it was reported that the dunk was so good, it killed him. Obviously, neither one of these things is true, and it's pretty funny to laugh at, but uh, not all vandalism is as well-intentioned. This is pretty jocular, and it's obvious that we're just, uh, whoever did this is just joking around, but you know, there's going to be a certain element of maybe you could call it chaos that is introduced into uh, introduced into the wiki sphere, I guess we'll say. So how do you work with that? How do you avoid it? Well, you plan for it, just like any other mitigation plan that you have uh, in your institution for your physical materials. It's an eventuality, right? Just like there's a lot of ways to uh, store your, your bread. Uh, of course, thanks. There we go. Just like there's a lot of ways to store your bread, there's a lot of ways to build a wiki. Uh, there's power and community strength and then discussion and consensus. Uh, and there are tools that Wikipedia has built that can um, cut back on the amount of vandalism and hacking that happens. These protected articles, a group of people who keep an eye on recent changes. And even if a specific user uh, is found to be committing a lot of vandalism or even harassing other users, there are temporary and permanent user bans as well. So one of the things that I was researching when putting this together was what are the rules of Wikipedia? And that was a fool's errand, let me tell you, because as you can see here, uh, Wikipedia has no firm rules. This is uh, the five pillars of Wikipedia, and it's probably the closest you're going to get to a very specific uh, set of rules for Wikipedia. It's, it's policies, it's guidelines, it's discussions. That's what is the skeleton of Wikipedia, what supports the rest of the platform. Uh, they're an encyclopedia, so it's general reference. Again, doesn't have to be doctoral level research, so that's okay. They do want to keep that neutral point of view, uh, which understandably the word neutral is a little questionable lately, um, especially in libraries. I know we've been talking about if libraries are neutral spaces, and we're upholding the status quo, what are we really doing? Wikipedia is no different. So there's a lot of conversation about that. Uh, Wikipedia also has uh, free content and expects all the people involved in the project to treat each other with respect. However, there are lots and lots of policy guideline pages. Here's just an example of some. You can see that they're set up really similar to just your basic Wikipedia page. So the layout's pretty, uh, pretty familiar if you're familiar with using Wikipedia. Lots of great information and links to other places that you can go. One thing I do wanna bring up is this conflict of interest page. Uh, conflict of interest would be contributing to Wikipedia about yourself, family, friends, clients, employers, or your financial or other relationships. And obviously that's a direct quote right from this page. Um, it's okay for you to create a Wikipedia page or edit a Wikipedia page, maybe for your archive or your library or, I don't know, your famous uncle. 
but you do need to note. You just need to be very transparent and note in your edit, like, hey, I work at this library or, um, you know, Billy D. Williams is my uncle and I'm updating his page. Uh, also, that's really cool if he's your uncle. So um, just want to be transparent in how you note your relationships to things. Now, on the other hand, if you happen to be a subject matter expert on lots of history in your town and you're editing about people who lived there but who you didn't know they're not related to you they don't pay you that's totally fine that's not a conflict of interest and that's just normal you know doing what you do best on wikipedia so let's go ahead and take a look at some quick intro videos and where to begin at the beginning we're going to look at setting up and logging into your account you can see in the upper right hand corner here uh, there are some links. I do already have an account, but if you don't, you click create an account. You really only need an email. You do not technically need an account to edit, but all your edits will be tied back to the IP address you're using. So you might as well make an account. You can pick a username that your grandma would not be offended by. It is going to be public. And any of your profile information, Chrome is so helpful trying to save my passwords. Any of your um, Bio biographical information that you add to your profile is also going to be public. You can see I have an extremely pithy and short, uh, that's redundant, I have an extremely pithy um, bio biography statement here, but you could put, you know, um, my specialty is turtles. I'm a herpetologist and I love to talk about turtles and I also happen to love pizza. You know, you could put that in your bio, whatever is good for you. You can see there's a history here of changes that you might have made of your editing history, you'll get alerts and notifications if they need to be notified about come up if you're having conversations with other users. And I would recommend when you set up your account or you're logging back in after a long time, checking out your preferences, you can set your uh, gender pronouns, how you would like to be referred to. You can have some more contact information added. If you'd like to create your own fancy signature, you can do that too. And uh, you can see there's a couple of tabs here for the way it looks, uh, like a lot of e-readers and, and some other platforms, you know, different fonts work for different people for various uh, vision needs. And the editing tab is where I, I want you to make sure that you are up to date and what you wanna see. There's a new visual editor that I think is just the bee's knees. Uh, I would go ahead and uncheck that temporarily disable the visual editor box, uh, but also enable that editing toolbar. And I'm gonna show you both editor versions today. One is the the visual editor, which is like what you see is what you get, the WYSIWYG editor, and the other one is more traditional. I'll show you both so you can pick, but that's where you can choose what you're into. There's a couple of neat beta features that I've added having to do with pop-ups and previews and um, seen some uh, new video embeds. And there's some other little neato tools that you can do, typical uh, kind of account setup, things that you can get notified by. It's pretty granular. Wikipedia is not going to spam you uh, with, you know, m emails for, for weird things that you're not interested in purchasing because they're just a nonprofit. So let's go ahead and move on to the librarian's favorite bar, the sidebar. It is the most productive trip to a bar that you will ever have. And this is just a sampling of the sidebar from Wikidata and Wikipedia, obviously. Uh, the Aside from the five laws of library science, the number one thing uh, that I took away from library school uh, was you don't have to know the answer, you just have to know how to find the answer. Uh, and that is doubly true for any wiki platform. Um, knowing where to find the answer really is the, to all, the tool, the key to your success. And we are already pros at that, so you've already got a leg up on everybody else even though their articles are good enough and smart enough to. So in the sidebar, there's lots of options for discussion, collaboration, connections, and we'll go ahead and take a look at some of those after this overview of your basic, robust Wikipedia page. If you haven't spent a lot of time on Wikipedia, uh, here's a good intro. We've got our title up here, and you can see in the upper right hand corner, I'm logged in, so I've still got a lot of my editing features, but the rest of the article looks pretty much the same. Uh, we've got little pop ups with cool pictures and links to other Wikipedia pages. Um, usually those blue links go to other Wikipedia pages. Sometimes they're external links. 
You also can hover over the superscript number for the reference um, that is again listed at the bottom. We'll cover those. We've got a table of contents and you can see in the lower left hand corner of my screen there each um, each entry in the table of contents does have a locator URL so you can click right to it if you want to and that works for sharing as well. Uh, over here on the right we've got the info box and we've got some King Philip called over five done specialist type information. High school mnemonics stick with you for life, don't they? Uh, we've got some other information here and this information will change. You know, if you're looking at a page for a Ferrari, it's not going to have class and species. It's going to have other things. If you're looking at a person, it's probably going to have a birthday, things like that. But it's nice to have that little quick thing to reference. You can see over on the left on that sidebar where uh, horseshoe crabs are involved in other projects. Wiki species obviously uh, going to be one of them and also the other languages that this page is in. So going back to the content of the page, we can see that each section has its own uh, header, easily spotted if you're scrolling through. In some of the smaller articles, it's not that you know big a deal, but in the in the larger ones, it can really help out for your navigation if there's a specific area that you want to go to. And we will take a look here at some of the images that are embedded. You can see there's video, there's images, there's photographs. Uh, they have references as well. A lot of these images come, a lot of this media, not even just the images, comes from Wikimedia Commons, which is pretty cool. A sister project of Wikimedia Foundation. And uh, as we highlight these references, we get a little pop up and we can click on those to get right down to the bottom. I think we'll try that with there's so many to click on. It's hard to uh, decide. Here we go. So we click jump to reference. And we can see it's highlighted there in the list. 59 references is a fair amount, but obviously horseshoe crabs have been around much longer than humans. So there is plenty of research available um, on their lifespan and their existence, even though the research all comes from humans, obviously. So we can click on that to go. You can see that little arrow is for showing you it's an external link. Wikipedia is maybe not a tool that you want to use as a citation in your research, but it's a great way to find the sources that you do want to use in your research. We've got some links here to uh, the arthropods portal. Um, Wikipedia does a great job of gathering pages by topic. Some links to external reading. We've got some other ebooks we can read. Uh, that one's an oldie, probably a goodie. We'll just, we'll just say for the purposes of this exercise, oldie and goodie. We can see that external link there with the arrow pointing out. And then below that, we've got some taxonomy for anybody who works with catalogs or systems or st structured data. Uh, this is all very important. And we can see there's a wiki data number there at the top, uh, but there's some other um, species information. This could apply to lots of different things that have a taxonomy that applies to them. And then we've got that most recently edited note down at the bottom. So pretty deep overview, but as a reminder, uh, some of the things that you can do are join a project team to work on a specific topic. Um, there might be themed projects that Wikipedia has started for like this month, we're going to talk about vacations and we're going to look at all the vacation pages and make sure they're up to date. This month, we're going to try adding pictures. You might have your own project that you want to focus on, which is great, uh, or you might want to fix articles as you stumble across them, find anything that's needed. So let's take a look at the community portal. This is your home base when you're starting out uh, or just working as an editor to find other people to work with, projects to work on. This is a great spot in this help out section. It's got everything divided by the type of work that you would be doing. Uh, spelling and grammar, wiki links, translate, add an image, and you can see you get a little pop up for every single item to see if it piques your interest, see if it's something that you are uh, already familiar with. For a lot of these, you don't even have to be familiar. You can learn about it as you go, or if you're doing something with spelling and grammar, you can always click that learn more option to see exactly what Wikipedia determines is uh, the standard for grammar. Again, there's no hard rules. I mean, grammar 
it's pretty, you know, consistent across the board. So grammar in one venue is going to be pretty similar to grammar in another. I don't know how many Oxford comma arguments they have. I didn't look that up, but I'm not sure what the standard is there. So if we click into this list of articles that need copy editing, you can see they are divided by month. And right now there's a little over 300 total that just need a you know, second, third, fourth set of eyes to go over them and see. You do not need to be a professional copy editor to do this. Again, I would never say that I am, but I'm just gonna take a look and see if I can find anything that sticks out to me that I can, uh, that I can edit or contribute. So we've got these subcategories again, everything by month, and it looks like there are 247 for the month of July. So let's go ahead and take, take a look at these. And you can see they are organized by um, alphabetical order. And again, we can kind of scroll through and see if there's anything interesting in there to you or to me. Uh, I would assure you that I looked at these uh, earlier this week and many of them I'm sure are still there. <laughs> uh, if you do see something that sparks your interest today. Uh, let's see, always love a good Mr. Bean episode. So maybe I could go take a look at those or maybe I'll keep going and see what else is here. Um, open clip art, I'm familiar with that. This looks like a movie I saw, but it turns out it's not. But I did see this. What's this Giants vision? Uh, this looks kind of interesting. I Not something I had heard of before, even though I'm a baseball fan. Um, not particularly a Giants fan, so I hadn't heard of this. But the article pulls up, and we see we've got our editing menu. We've got our header that says, might require some copy editing for something. We're not going to tell you specifically what it is, because that would take the fun out of it, right? A uh, pretty short article, and as I'm reading through looking for grammatical errors, I notice that Joe Morgan, Dwayne Kuyper, and Phil Stone, uh, it says we're the principal announcers for Giants Vision, but it should be the other version of principal. So I'm going to go ahead real quick and edit that. And when you click edit, you can see not much changes when you get that visual editor. You get a new little menu up at the top that's very similar to um, many text editors, uh, Google Docs, Microsoft Word, other kind of things that you might be using. You can go to the talk tab if you want to. I'm gonna cancel out of that right now. And let me show you what the source editing looks like. As you can see, this is a lot more like hypertext markup. Uh, not my favorite thing to look at, so I'm going to switch back just for the ease of this video. And you can see that I could insert more content, or I could just go to the word that I want to change. But the, when it highlights blue, it's a section that you can work on. And I'm just going to erase it like a regular text editor, change the wording, change or change the letters to change the word, and go hit Publish Changes in the upper right-hand corner. And this is your opportunity to make a little note. Since this is a collaborative project, Wikipedia is a collaborative project, noting is very uh, important. You might not necessarily need the note yourself, but somebody else looking at it might go back and say, oh, it should be the other version of this word, or there shouldn't be a comma there. And, and you wanna note why you did that. Um, this is also a place that you would be noting um, if you had a conflict of interest, if you know if my dad worked for the Giants for 72 years, uh, this is where I would note that. Also, if he worked for 72 years, he'd probably have his own Wikipedia page. But uh, you can see here the changes and you don't have to review them, but that's what it looks like when you do. Go ahead and hit publish. And there we go, it's changed. We can see your edit was published. So I went up and actually went to look and I realized that uh, as I was doing it to go see my editing history that it hadn't actually refreshed on the page yet. But if you click view history, this is where it's going to be. You can see I have some history from when I used this account a long time ago. 
Uh, and after all this work, uh, I had a couple more things that were added on to it. All right. So let's go back and take a look at one of the wiki projects. Uh, how a, a great way to get involved if there's a subject that you're into, but maybe you don't want to start something from scratch. There are over 2000 wiki projects, which is a lot, uh, unsurprisingly. So you don't have to uh, see a whole list of them and, and navigate your way through it. There's a handy search bar here, which you can search. Or there are a couple of little headings down here that you can go by uh, pretty high level. Um, you can still check out the FAQs and the guideline page if you're interested in that. But we've got arts and culture, geography. Um, Wikipedia is a great home for anybody who likes maps uh, and history and science. Wikipedia is great for everything, right? Uh, and um, some more Wikipedia related uh, maintenance and tasks that have to do with running the projects themselves. If you are an administratively minded person, that's going to be a great place for you to check out. Let's go back up here and I think I've still got banana splits on the brain. So let's take a look at food and drink and take a look at some of those projects. The project page here, you see a little table for food and drink. The green colored lines uh, or rows are active projects. You can still work on the inactive ones or just might not be as much discussion or activity, which if that's what you're going for, that's fine. Uh, but if you would like a little bit more collaboration, then maybe pick a green one. Uh, so I'm kind of in the mood for breakfast now, actually, now that I see that, I'm having a bit of a Ron Swanson moment and I see that uh, there's some nice sunny yellow menu bars, info boxes, and we've got some tabs across the top of the page to show you who else is a member of this project. Some templates that you can use, uh, this work that these people on this project have put forth to keep it going. The goals of the project, want to make sure we maintain neutral point of view about waffles. And uh, here's some list of some open tasks, ways to contribute. They are just saying, hey, here are some things we need help on. Do you want to help us? We can put a neutral point of view, get some stubs. We can wikify, which means add links to other Wikipedia pages within an article. Down here is a record of other projects that have been worked on, other articles that have been worked on, and maybe some that need merged. And I'm not really in a muffin mood, so I'm going to go back up to Wikify, First Watch, um, restaurant chain that we've got here in Central Ohio, uh, maybe in other parts of Ohio too. Just one of those places that opens up really early to serve breakfast and then uh, closes at like two or three in the afternoon. So we can see here, uh, it's a little bit longer than the Giants Vision article, but we've got our menu up at the top for editing. And I'm looking for information in this article that could be linked to other Wikipedia pages. So that's going to be names of other businesses. Um, in this case, maybe locations. We can see Pacific Grove and Bradenton both have links already. Um, doesn't necessarily have to have a, a reference if it's a link someplace else. But I'm just checking out these other business names, Bread and Company, Good Egg, Egg and I Restaurants. And here in this next paragraph, I see we're talking about uh, investment firms, equity companies. And Catterton has a link, but Advent International does not. Freeman and Spigoli does, but Advent International does not. So maybe I could complete that trifecta and see if there's already a page for Wikipedia. So I'm going to highlight that, go up to my editor. You could really do this in either order, but um, now I'm going to go ahead and highlight it again. And click on that link button up at the top and Wikipedia has already searched and found the Advent International page for me. So all I have to do is click on that and I can change the text in the article if I want to, but I'm not going to and click publish changes. And I'll get another notes box. Take a second to type this out. 
and I'm not officially part of this project, so I'm going to make a little bit fuller note than I maybe normally would. Um, it's kind of like a drive by editing, and I just want the project team to know like, oh, I just saw that you needed this, so I did it. No conflicts of interest to note. Haven't been to a first watch in a while. Actually, I guess probably none of us have halfway. <laughs> Sorry, to be a downer there. Uh, and so I don't need to watch this page. Uh, that would be if I want to get notifications if anybody else has changed the page. Um, you can see there's a preview of my new link text, and I'm going to go ahead and publish the change. And now when I hover over it, there's a link to Advent International. And I can click through, and I can see all the other links, and how everything is all linked together in the Wikipedia world. All right, so another option that we have, as I mentioned in that shorter list, was just sometimes you happen to be browsing on Wikipedia and maybe you're looking up, you know, history of basketball. Maybe you come across the article and it's got a big orange exclamation point saying, hey, this article has issues, can you help us? Well, sure you can maybe, uh, if you want to. Um, so this is another way that you can find, maybe just stumble upon things to edit. You can see I just did a couple of quick slides here because it's a really big article uh, and I didn't want to scroll all the way through it and make everybody dizzy. Uh, we've got some headers here that note that the section needs expansion. And then we've also got in this section, African Americans in basketball, some links here. We see where it says find sources, some links that take you right to the sources that you can use to add the citations, to add the references and to expand this section. So Wikipedia, you know, wants to help you do that work and help you get that done. So moving on to Wikidata, um, as you can see, there are uh, over 88 million items that anyone can edit in this free knowledge base. Wikidata uh, refers to themselves itself as a secondary database, which means that it doesn't have primary research, but it points you to the primary research. And um, structured data is really where it's at with um, wiki wiki data contents and this is where I think the librarian in us uh, the organizer in us the rules oriented person really uh, sings and shines and and gets excited or at least I'm just talking about myself maybe now um, but the structured data and in wiki, wiki data that is both machine readable and human readable is the foundation of so many cool projects and so much so much cool work that uh, it really, really nests in well with work that we're seeing with collections now. Wikidata, again, is a central storage for structured data and provides support to many other sites and services, including a lot of times you'll see things that are in Wikidata show up in those Google cards uh, when you do a search on Google, the, the little information that's over on the right. Data is such a buzzword lately. Um, you know, it has been for a couple of years and, and we're hearing more about collections as data and how we can use analytics on our own digitized materials and content. And this can be a really great way to, you know, again, dip your toe in that and get started and kind of wrap your head around all the things that you can do with data without having it be too overwhelming. And with having a lot of people to ask questions to, you can see here there are links to um, to chats and portals and other tools that you can use. There's a lot less discussion back and forth on um, content that gets added to Wikidata because it is more structured. Um, you'll see as I go through some examples here that really when you're adding information, there's only because of the controlled vocabulary in the taxonomy, there's only so many ways you can do it. And Wikidata really walks you right through it. So it's pretty neat. But uh, let's do a quick overview again of a Wikidata item. This is an example item that's in one of their tutorials. In Wikidata, everything that's individual instead of an article is an item. And every item has an item identifier, which is a unique identifier. If you are familiar with working with databases, it's a primary key. Um, it's something that nobody else has. So every item, uh, it's ideally, would have a label, doesn't have to. But um, as, a, as an example here, there could be three famous Douglas Adamses, but there's only one Douglas Adams who is an English writer and humorist. And so that Douglas Adams gets Q42. Douglas Adams, who is the producer for your uncle Billy D. Williams, who won a couple of Grammys. That's just the thing that I made up. Please don't Google that. Um, he might have Q. 
75. Uh, and then the, the resulting information below his label would be different, obviously, than Douglas Adams, the English writer. In so the items are made up of the label, and then we have the statements. Statements are descriptors of the item, uh, and they have properties like educated at, born at, um, degrees, or where you were employed. And these are all obviously human, uh, human related properties. But if it's something like uh, a glacier or a lake or a mountain, it might be like height above sea level or, um, you know, geographic coordinates. We can further clarify what those properties are with uh, the values and the qualifiers. And again, the way that this is structured when you're entering in the information is so easy. So let's take a look at the community portal. I'm still uh, logged in, you can see. Uh, transfers across, across the board, right? Universal login. And we can see that even on first glance, there is a lot fewer links to discussion and things like that uh, that are going on in Wikidata. And that's not because there's not a lot of activity, it's just because it's very, uh, it's very structured. And like I said, there's not a lot of discussion back and forth. We still have the same tools in place for vandalism and harassment and things like that. But uh, some things that you might wanna check out on your own would be the Wikidata tours and the glossary. Over here on the right, this box has a lot of great information for getting started. And we can see some of the projects that Wikidata works with. Some of the technical requests, uh, if you are an under the under the hood person, I, I think that would be like under the engine. If you really want to roll your sleeves up and get in there when it comes to doing database requests and queries and writing some code. Down here in the other, that tools option is where you're going to find a lot of really cool projects that people have been working on and uh, some games also that you can take a look at to help you edit. All right, editing our first Wikidata item. So I just randomly found this, uh, Kanger Lusak Gletscher. And I noticed that it said that that's what the word is in English, but that it's an instance of a glacier. And I'm thinking that that's probably uh, a, a mistranslation or that's not the English word for what we're looking for. So I'm gonna go ahead and look on Wikipedia proper and see if there's an article for this. And it turns out there is. And English language Wikipedia has the second word as G-L-A-C-I-E-R, glacier in English. So I'm gonna go ahead and go back and just edit that real quick. You hit that edit button. And you can see this is a lot uh, simpler uh, on the surface anyway, uh, you know, more maybe more elegant, some people might say, um, to work with. And you can put in a little bit of a descriptor if you want. The descriptor is not meant to be a full sentence. It's just a brief bit of information that would identify this Kangaroo-Lusak Glacier from some other Kangaroo-Lusak Glacier that may exist at another point in time um, or in the world somewhere. Um, you don't have to uh, put a reference for the kind of name description label information. And frankly, you don't have to put a reference or a citation for anything in Wikidata. Um, other people uh, go through and add those references too. Um, it still works without it. But we can see you hit edit, you hit publish, and it's right then and there. Let's take a look at a person. Uh, personal favorite here, Dr. Amy Acton, who is the former director of the Ohio Department of Health. We've got a photograph that's added from Wikimedia Commons. We've got some gender identification, country of citizenship, uh, given name and family name, uh, kind of a general date of birth, a little bit of education information. But we can see we've still got those editing um, options available to us. So I'm going to go ahead and update some of this general information, this label information to begin with. I have a couple of um, articles actually pulled up on other tabs in my browser for Dr. Acton right now, and Dr. Amy Acton was indeed the first female director of the Ohio Department of Health. And Acton is a married name. So several articles that I found refer to Dr. Acton uh, under her former names. Uh, she was still a doctor um, under some of those names uh, and still has notable history under all of those names. 
So we want to make sure that we include those. If anybody's searching for Amy Stearns Acton or Amy Beecher or Amy Stearns, that they're all linked together with the same Amy Acton Q8777-3723 that we have now. They don't need to be separate items because they are all the same instance of human as we see down there in the statement. I forgot one of them there, so I went ahead and hit publish. And or excuse me, I went ahead and hit edit again to redo it. Uh, I forgot it after I hit publish and you can see how easy it is to go in and hit edit. And make your changes. There's no preview. There's no notation. Uh, now, I have seen other images of Dr. Acton out there. I think she has like a professional headshot that I've seen. But the images that you use in Wikidata need to come from Wikimedia Commons or be images that you hold copyright to. I don't have any of my own images of Amy Acton, so I'm going to leave that alone for now. I'm going to take a look at adding more family names. As we said, Acton is a married name, so I, I want to see about maybe adding uh, her former married names as well. So I'm going to try Beecher. But because I didn't select any of the items that are coming down from that drop down menu, you can see the box is red and you can see that publish is gray. So I'm going to try and see, oh, well, maybe if I add a, a reference, maybe if I add a link to a story that says that that's her name, will that work? Uh, there are two kinds of references that you can add on Wikidata, either a URL, uh, which would be an external web page, reference URL. Um, here I have this wired article from some work that uh, Dr. Acton did during Obama's uh, campaign in 2008, President Obama's campaign. And uh, you can also link to a uh, Wikimedia item, but I'm not doing that right now. So that didn't really work. Um, usually it would automatically kind of change. Um, still not happening. And I'm seeing maybe if I add a property. No, that's not working either. And the reason it's not working is actually because I did not select from the drop down uh, menu that came down. If you saw where it said Beecher family name, I should have selected that to have it go through. So you can see Wikidata does not, you know, Wikidata keeps you on track. It, it's kind of like the, you know, the bumper cars that are on the little tracks for you uh, at the park. And it's it's a little bit more fun than that, but uh, but it's not going to let you go off the rails and, and just do whatever you have to select items that are already in the system. Uh, if and if it's not, then you can create it. We can also see down here at the bottom. Um, there's only Youngstown State University, and if we look back at her, even her Wikipedia page here has Youngstown State, uh, Neomed, Northeast, Northeast Ohio Medical University and Ohio State University. So I think I might see about adding that into her page. So I'm going to go down to educated at statement. And I want to add another school. So I'm going to double check and see if there are any other schools or any other information that I can add. I probably had 70 tabs open while I was doing <laughs> doing this just to make sure that I had everything available. Definitely a tab hog. Uh, but this is from uh, Youngstown State University's alumna uh, newsletter, and we've got uh, that's a great reference. It comes you know right from the source uh, that she went there, and then some other cooling information. But it lines up with what we find elsewhere. You know, as information professionals, we will always want to double check our sources and make sure we see it a couple of places. Um, before we put that information out there. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a value because a value would be another school, another university. Um, I tried to paste it and that didn't work. didn't give me anything to select. 
So let's try Ohio State University. And I don't know if that's because there's no item or not at this point, but surely there's an item for Ohio State University. So I'm just going to start typing. And we can see it's the first one there. So I want to make sure and click on that, select that. There's a couple to pick from, but I'm just going to go with that one, which it looks the purple bar looks purple to me. My indigo, violet. I haven't calibrated my screen. Yet. So I'm going to go ahead and select that. And we can see that came up OK, the little green line around the box. I'm grabbing the URL right now from that YSU alumna newsletter or post, and I'm going to add that as a reference. So again, I'm going to go ahead and type reference URL. And click to publish that. And in the interest of time, I'm going to go ahead and actually skip to the next option that we have here just so that we can see how we can add a picture. I was just adding more references in that one. Adding a picture is super easy. So we're going to go ahead and go down to the end of the list of statements and click add a statement because a statement is a descriptor of the item and we can see right there it shows us there's two we can pick from because we already know uh, what family this item is in. So I'm going to go for image. I'm going to go back to that Wikipedia page and look at that beautiful glacier. I'm going to go ahead and click on that so it's, it's in its own page. I can see this image comes from Wikimedia Commons, so we know it's good to use for this particular instance. Author of NASA. Authored by NASA, I should say. So all you're going to do when you're inserting an image is highlight that title, the whole file colon name dot JPEG thing. Just copy that. Go back to your Wikidata item page, paste it, and brilliant, there's a thumbnail. How great is that? Uh, super easy. Going to go ahead and hit publish. You don't need a reference. And boom, you have added an image. So again, in the interest of time, I'm going to go ahead and move along here. I apologize for the delay in getting started. Uh, here's just one of the really cool things that somebody's done with some of the data that's in Wikidata. Uh, this is a timeline, a Wikidata timeline. There are lots of things that you can plug in here, but this is of sitcoms. Uh, and you can see it runs from probably like, what is that, 1945 all the way up to 2020. So if there's something that you uh, really like and you don't see it here, maybe you could go add it as an item in Wikidata yourself. All right, fire hose of information. We learned today how to briefly uh, st get started navigating Wikipedia and Wikidata. And we learned that uh, the audio doesn't work when you play <laughs> your slideshow now. Uh, we learned how to connect with the community. We learned how to uh, get support and start projects. And I'm gonna go ahead and actually exit out of this particular show and go back to the call. I know it's 2.58 right now, so I do apologize. I'm able to hang out if anybody here does have questions, but if you, uh, that you wanna talk about otherwise, um, you can always reach me at my email address, which is there. Um, let's see, oh, I'm, I'm, turns out I'm chaotic evil actually, Emily. I'm sorry, I'm just seeing your chat now. <laughs> I didn't realize that. <laughs> Uh, so does anybody have any questions or anything that I'm going to turn my camera back on here? Anything that I can answer for you right now or anything you want to talk about or maybe go back and see live. I can share my screen again. And again, thank you very much for um, coming today. If you do have to go. You can either unmute yourself or um, type it in the chat and I can read it out loud for everybody. All right, got a couple of folks leaving for other webinars. Totally fine. I have some this afternoon myself, actually. So again, on uh, 
August at the end of August there. I think August 27th was the date. I'm going to double check real quick. Uh, we're doing the last of our Wikimedia webinars, which are going to focus on contributing content uh, specifically, hopefully from your library uh, when it would not be a conflict of interest at that point. It's totally fine to yes, August 27th, 2 p.m. Um, contributing, uh, creating content, creating articles, creating collections of all your digitized information, digitized collection. If you've got digitized photos, local history collections that you want to share. Uh, that's really what we've been leading up to this whole time, this uh, triangle of wiki greatness. So thank you so much, everybody, for uh, joining us today. And I will be posting this and sharing this link. And again, if you do have questions, come, come get me later. Come email me later. Thanks. Bye bye.